Teaching is probably one of the hardest professions I had to take. Especially when I'm teaching something that I'm really passionate about, like animation for example. For nearly 5 years, I've been teaching through my YouTube channel, through video courses on my Gumroad channel, and in person, with workshop and in-class sessions. And not a surprising statement, I'm a student. I still am. Even if I graduated from school, I still consider myself to be a student asking for people questions and guidance in a lot of things. I've been an animation student at CalArts. I've been mentored by several different people. I learned to take a lot of things with a grain of salt. Through my experiences of being a student and a teacher, I do have a lot of thoughts on what makes a great animation teacher. And this can also lead into other art disciplines, such as film, music, acting, dance, etc. If you're thinking about teaching a class, maybe this is a video that might be beneficial. Other than that, feel free to take this with a grain of salt. Because honestly, this is just one man's thoughts and opinions. Hey guys, it's Nico, and for someone who's worked in the industry for both independent and major studios, I've also been a teacher and a mentor at the side. A part of me does enjoy teaching, and that's kind of why I love making online content where it's mostly focused on education. I love sharing knowledge that works for me and hopefully works on other people too. However, during my experiences as a teacher, not every ideal strategy that I have in mind works for everyone else. Some students love teachers that are very critical and hard on them, whereas others prefer more gentler teachers. Aside from personality of the teachers and how they'd want to hold or teach their class, I do have some thoughts on what I feel makes a great animation teacher. For this video, I'm going to rule out anything related to fundamentals, draftsmanship, rules, principles, and basic mechanics because that's a given. All teachers should talk about that and they should teach that. But that's really a small percentage of what I feel makes a good teacher. Because a teacher can basically get a book like the Animator Survival Kit and just recite whatever is in that Bible. And honestly, do you need a teacher for that? Anyways, I'm getting carried away. Let's get started. The first thing I learned to do is to just challenge students and give them objectives. One of the first assignments that I give my students is to animate something or draw something based on a prompt. I'll teach them nothing I know about storyboarding or animation, and if it's just for animation, I tell them this is how you flip your frames, this is how you make the thing go play, and if you press a certain button, you can see your previous and next drawings, and then I'll just tell you to animate something like a dude throwing a ball. I might give them parameters, I mean, <clears throat> uh, parameters, giving them a time limit, a certain animation length, and some rules and bits and pieces over here. Now what's interesting is that I never taught them anything about animation principles or basics, but what will happen is that they're going to use whatever tools they know and they have, and whatever knowledge that they have, they'll try and implement it in this stupid little assignment. The point in this is to challenge students in how they can utilize their creativity and their current knowledge and how to solve a certain problem, or how to make something work without prior knowledge of it. Maybe some people will pick up on the squash and stretch without even knowing what it is. Some people might discover something called arcs. Some might even stylize the overall timing. Well, it's good to know the rules, the rules can't save you all the time. And the only thing that can save you and the only thing that can make your animation work really well is by your own execution. Besides, rules and theory and mechanics and shit like that can be taught. Things as problem solving and personal execution should be found from within. I think teaching the basic principles and mechanics and rules is a good thing, don't get me wrong. However, if we're only teaching rules and theories and principles without having our students think for themselves, we're not doing a good job in terms of having our students think for themselves, if all they know is to rely on rules and principles. Before there was the Nine Old Men and the whole 12 principles of animation, there was Windsor McKay, who basically discovered these mechanics by himself while working on these other films that he did. So if you're teaching, be sure to challenge your students in ways so that they can utilize their creativity. There was an experiment that Glenn Keane did with his grandchild, I think where he asked his grandchild of his to draw these complex expressions, but the child knew nothing about drawing, or facial anatomy, or anything of that matter. But the expressions he came up with for those more complex emotions are something to be desired, because that's a creativity that you can't find in a lot of trained artists. Like putting stars on someone's face when they're really excited. The second great thing an animation teacher or an art teacher does is to inspire them to think differently and find ways to solve a problem. Look, some of the easiest ways an animation to show weight is to utilize the bouncing ball, timing, and all that. But if you think about it, those are just formulas that just work. They're just gimmicks. Sometimes you don't need something to squash and stretch to show weight. 
and other medias have portrayed weight and impact in different ways that don't have to utilize the 12 principles of animation. Inspire them to be okay with breaking the rules when they need to. If they have a certain task that they want to do, but that doesn't work well with the 12 principles of animation, that's something that can be worked around with. There are ways to inspire your students by challenging them. Like how were you to show weight if you were just to strip away the squash and stretch? How can you show a certain action with just four drawings? How can you show the waving flag without having to describe the overlapping action, but to make the energy of the overlapping action felt? These are things that will eventually lead to become its own sort of philosophy of animation. Look at anime for example. Some anime out there totally break the 12 principles of animation, but the intent and the feeling is all there and it works just as well. And sometimes even better than a fully animated thing. So if you're gonna give a student this sort of assignment, Make sure they try their best to hit that overall intention and see if that intention is felt and read through the limitations they had. This will also strengthen their creativity if they need to work more economically and effectively when their rules and high production can't save their butts. If you're a student or someone learning animation, this is a good exercise to try, especially if you want to make more indie content that's supposed to be done quickly and effectively. Food for thought, story time animators. Number three, introduce different styles and methods to animation. Whether it's western animation, anime, stop motion. If you're a teacher, show them the world of animation. Give them a sense of culture. Because every part of animation in every different part of the world have their own unique way of solving a problem. And guess what? They don't always follow the 12 principles of animation or the 9 old men. One thing I like about looking at other animations from around the world is the different indications of culture and society. How do different countries portray men, women, children, animals, and how do they work in their own unique way? And what can you learn from each of those different styles? All of this will help build the foundation that can work for my earlier points such as point one and point two, where I talk about inspiring ways to think differently and to find ways to solve problems without always resorting to rules that were set by people a long time ago. Sometimes you'll see a similarity between all of these different styles. And you'll be able to pick those up and see why they work for each of those styles. Show them different tones and genres of animation, whether it's serious animation or more cartoony. There are several ways that a certain emotion can be portrayed depending on these different circumstances. Learn how different countries portray pantomime. Learn how a country implements their own culture into animation. And how can you utilize that in your own work? Or how can that inspire you for your future work? So for any idiot out there saying you should never learn from anime, well, you already know he's an idiot. But you should also be open to a lot of different styles too. And why each of those styles have a certain value to them. Number four, understand the student's needs and wants. So when I was a student at CalArts, not everyone wanted to go into the industry. Some wanted to go into the more indie scene or some wanted to go into video games. While some wanted to go into feature animation, others just wanted to stay at TV. I do my best as a teacher, such as teaching them the basics, the classical principles of animation, and how to deal with other basic mechanics. When I'm teaching a live class, I personally love to help students with their own goals. The last class I was teaching at Concept Design Academy, my students were very diverse in what they want to get into. Some wanted to dwell more into game animation, whereas others wanted to become story time animators. And I gotta be honest, all those other things that they mentioned about, such as like, I want to go into anime, these are things that I never don't really know myself. So I have to go out there and talk to people that I admire that do work in those fields of animation. I reach out to people who worked in anime industries and how they create a timing chart. Because there are differences and I need to know that if I want to talk about that with my students. For story time animators, I will do my best to research story time animators as well as look at other animation styles that I feel would best help the student improve on a certain skill. One thing you don't want to do is have a student feel left out or feel alienated or feel like they're left behind. One thing you have to know is that not every student learns or functions the same way. While some students may be faster at something, others might need to take things slow. Whereas some students are really good at draftsmanship skills, other students are better at appeal and overall idea. But I think it's a good thing to learn about what the student wants to learn about animation, what they need to learn about animation, how they can get there. Because there's a reason why they wanted to take up animation. Imagine going to an animation class where you want to learn a certain style, but the teacher goes, nope, that style sucks, you should not learn that, we don't do that here in this country. It's terrible, and it would make people hate the actual medium. So you have to be open that these students are the ones who will evolve this medium overall. Number five, having them redo work. 
When I first taught my own class, I gave my students a new assignment every session and a new in-class assignment every session. While this may be ideal for someone who is familiar with animation, this really isn't ideal for people who are just learning animation for the first time or any art field. Like I said, some students might pick up things faster and some students might need more time on something. I'll repeat and tell my students, this is the bouncing ball, here's the squash and stretch, and here's this principle. And no matter how many times I recite it, they'll miss it out in their assignments. And you know what? That is okay and that is totally fine. What I learned as a teacher is to train your students to be able to see and pick up on their habits or mistakes. So sometimes I'll give them an assignment, they'll go home, they'll do it, and they'll come back, and everything doesn't work. So. I do draw overs, I tell them what they're missing, I tell them what to strengthen, I give them some ideas, and I give them another week for them to work on top of it. This teaches them several things. This teaches them the world of revising a current work, which happens in the industry or any work field. But it's meant to encourage their students to spot their mistakes or issues that they have and address it. That way, when they start redoing something, they're actually thinking about how they can improve their animation while making those corrections. As a teacher, it'll also make your life easier because it helps you gauge on each student where they're at, how they tackle different things, and how they correct their own animation. So when I teach nowadays, for let's say for example, 10 weeks of class, what used to be 10 different assignments, I dropped it down to about 5 different assignments for 10 sessions. Or sometimes maybe even less. Maybe I want the last few assignments to spend three different sessions on. So maybe I'll just have four big assignments throughout the whole course. And the smaller ones can just be done in class. Last but not least, helping a student redo their assignment will allow them to digest all the information that you were trying to get across. Because when you preach or talk about it once, it's probably going to fly by their head. But if you actually make them work with it, they're going to actually start thinking and utilizing it more in their future work. Number six, keep up to the date with the world, the industry, and research these things for your students. Listen, some of these students might want to work in animation or be an animator themselves, and they want to have the tools ready for that when they come into the industry. The thing with the industry is that things tend to change a lot throughout a short period of time. Whether there's a demand for story artists, background artists, animators, programs and tools that they use, these are factors to think about for your students. So most 2D animation studios, while some use paper still, most of them and the majority of them have switched to fully digital. So I've been practicing how to use Toon Boom Harmony. I got Blender to try their grease pencil. I still use Adobe Animate, but I still use TV Paint. While personally I do feel like it would be ideal to teach my students how to animate on paper, it's not really where the mainstream industry is headed. And honestly, not everyone has access to animating on paper. I mean, have you guys animated on paper? You need the space for it, you need a down shooter, you need animation paper, you need the desk, you need an Acme peg bar, you need all this crap. Then again, the down shooter, you need to shoot it. You're shooting, right? Oops, you drop all your papers, you lose the order, and your peg bar gets a bit tilted during shoot. That a place like Indonesia doesn't really have or maybe it's just really hard to find. But other than that, it's not really accessible to everyone and computer programs are much more accessible for that. And if they have that, if they have a tablet, if they have a display tablet, that's amazing and be open to that. I do think there is a benefit of animating on paper because it does force you to make decisions and to not rely too much on the pencil test machine because it's a big hassle to do that in the first place and it makes you think about putting down your drawings first before you trial and error it, it is a good discipline to build. But again, it's definitely not ideal for everyone, and for someone like me who loves to make independent content and fully finished content by myself, I probably wouldn't do animation on paper by myself. So if you can, research for your students. Research what skills are needed, what tools they use nowadays. If a student needs a free software, have that in the back of your head. And also give them some ideas on affordable tablets out there because Wacom isn't the only one out there. Not anymore. Number seven, be flexible in catering to your students. This one might be a tricky one, especially if you're starting a class where it's very specific in where you want to go. If you're teaching a classical animation class that utilizes paper and all the 12 principles of animation by the nine old men, sure, the students know what they're getting in for. But if you really want a student to get the best out of the class and to really feel like that they have a voice in animation, make it accessible to them. Let them understand that what you're trying to teach might help them in what they want to learn animation for. This does not mean let things slide and let students just do whatever they want. 
What I'm trying to say here is that you don't want a student to feel left behind, even if a student is trying to take their time to learn one aspect of animation. I remember for one student, it took four sessions for a student to understand what squash and stretch was, but everyone else got it. So for that student, I'll try and challenge them more, utilize squash and stretch if they really want to understand that, ask them what is it that they're not understanding about something, and find ways to make it work for them. One thing that a lot of new teachers tend to misconceive is that you have to be a hardcore artist or an amazing artist to begin with before you even start teaching. But those are two very different things, teaching and being good at what you do. I had a teacher back at school who was an indie filmmaker but gave back the best feedback, the best advice, and really constructive critique for animation notes that veteran animators who were teaching at the time failed to do. That just shows that this teacher knew how to cater their notes or their feedback for a student's goals and knew the best way and how to coach them to get closer to that goal. And if you're able to cater your teachings for a student, for example, they're going to get the best out of whatever education that you're giving them and they'll probably turn in an assignment where they do something really well and really amazing without you having to teach that certain thing that they did. I remember a recent student of mine turned in his final assignment and he utilized a stagger for his character pushing a heavy object and I never taught him how to stagger or how to do staggers in animation. He just figured it out by himself. And to me, that is the true beauty of teaching animation. It's when the students do something that strengthen their work without giving a specific instruction for that to work. So be sure to understand your students more, ask them questions, understand what their point of view is or where they're coming from. A good saying that a friend of mine and a good teacher that I look up to said in class was that he addressed his class as an R&D team, which means he's using their experiences to kind of gauge and how he can deliver the best teaching experience that he can give to them. Sometimes I tell my students, if I'm wrong at something or if something that I'm teaching right now you don't agree with me, be okay with talking about it. Be okay with being wrong in front of your students. Because part of the learning journey in teaching is knowing that you don't really know it all and that your students are there to actually make you a better person, a better teacher, if you're humble for it. And for many passionate people, that can be quite hard. So yeah, those are my thoughts and what I feel makes a great teacher in general, especially for something like animation, if you're gonna teach it. And honestly, I'm still changing my ways and how to teach because it always changes depending on my experience with a certain term or semester for my students. Some of you guys right now might be disagreeing with me on some of my points. But teaching something like animation, for example, where you have to teach them drawing, storytelling, acting, there's just so much to talk about. And you have to understand that your students will not be immediate badasses after your class. Learning animation is a self-discipline for sure, like they have to work on their own stuff or gain experience to get better at it. No one comes out of my class being the next James Baxter or the next Glenn Keane or whatever. This is very delusional by the way, I remember a teacher told their students that they would be better than the fourth years at the school. That's delusional thinking and even if you're teaching a first year class and one of your students becomes better than the fourth years, it's not really because it's all because of you, but it's because of that student's determination. And not everyone has the same determination or not everyone learns things as fast as that student. However, if you're that teacher who makes their students leave or finish their course wanting to animate outside of their own free time and to just continue animation even though you're done with them, then you know you've done a good job teaching the profession that you're so passionate about. And who knows, they might be names to remember in the future soon. Also, if you're thinking about teaching a profession that you're really passionate about, you should do it for sure. Even if you're not the best at that profession, teaching is a great skill to learn and will eventually build great leadership skills. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. Um, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.